be seated in the presence of God. I want to read the scripture from Daniel chapter 1. Remember, the king is in a hurry to get you, to touch you. I stand before you in awe of God because it's an awesome thing to stand in the presence of the Lord. Daniel, the first chapter, verse, uh, the first verse. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. This he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of the court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, a young man without any physical defects, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. <laughs> he wants the best and the brightest and train them with the best training. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine. From the king's table, they were to be trained for three years. And after that, they were to enter into king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Lazariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach. To Mishael, Meshach. To Azariah, Abednego. Verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. He asked the chief officials for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the officials to show favor and compassion to Daniel. I'm, help, I'm asking the Lord to help me. Such a heavy, weighty glory of God in this room. You know, when the king is there, he doesn't need your activities. God knows how to be God. And if you are struggling as a father, as a mother to be God... God has a good news for you. Don't worry, I got that part for you. You just complete your part. You trust me. I'm not doing experiment. People do experiment out of ignorance. But with God, there is no ignorance. God knows what he's doing. And he does it so beautifully. This is a story that's very important to us because we are in this prophetic hour. Jerusalem, the city of Yahweh, the beloved city of Yahweh. Jerusalem, the dwelling place of the temple where the Ark of Covenant is there. Jerusalem was the wall, Jerusalem was the palace, Jerusalem was the temple, Jerusalem was the kings. She kept ignoring the voice of the prophets. God had been so patient. He was talking. He was speaking. But now the hour has come. And the hour is to be delivered. 600 years right before Christ came. To be delivered to the Babylonians. The, ba the Babylonians came. You remember the book of Jeremiah? Jeremiah was crying. He was saying, don't let this happen to your beloved Jerusalem. 
city of peace whom you gave the fathers whom you gave the promise whom you gave the covenant whom you gave the prophets Jerusalem your beloved is to be taken to captivity is not that Babylon has more power than Yahweh the God of Israel but Israel did not honor God did not worship God Israel was worshiping idols idols that left her empty and bewildered idols that left her vulnerable to her enemies and God is saying it's not because their gods are stronger than me but the cup is full and they're coming they're gonna take you and I will deliver you he said into their hands and immediately the hour has come for the enemy to come God called the enemy you are my shepherd you're my servant the Babylonians came they took over Israel they start oppressing the land three things I want you to connect in your spirit Daniel 1 Romans 1 and for us who live in the 21st century in 2023 you see what's happening here now in this land in the West if you don't know about the righteous God and his holy judgment nothing that we hear and see makes sense they're butchering our kids they're lying to our kids the same way the stuff that was happening here in Daniel 1 and in Romans 1 when the people refused to give glory to God to worship him God delivered them to dark mind dark mind depraved mind that is an evil genius so these people everything that they had they lost now at this time Jerusalem is destroyed the walls are destroyed the temples are destroyed the oracles from the temple see the plan of the enemy is to reprogram your mind from the God of Israel to his gods the Bible says he took them from the temple the Bible says he took it to his own temple their name this four Hebrew boys their name the meaning of their name is connected with Yahweh the God of Israel and now he's renaming them trying to give them a new identity that's why some of you you wonder you wonder as a parent how can I God how can I guide my kids how can I protect them and it's even harder to be a kid at this time than to be a parent because all hell is coming with full force lying to you bombarding your mind telling you something that you are not the enemy is working so hard the enemy is working all the time I want you to know something the king says I want the best I want the brightest I want to trend them in the best way to trend them for three years but remember every training you get there your looks your family history your nobility is not gonna rescue you from the coming hour just in one chapter you remember what happened and I want to warn every one of you including myself just in one chapter the Bible says the king was sitting King Nebuchadnezzar is sitting and he's thinking about the future what's gonna happen in the future what's gonna happen in the future while he was thinking about the future the scripture tells us he saw a dream 
And in the dream, he saw something. But the moment he saw it, he knew that it, he, it was not an ordinary dream. So he called for the magicians. He called for the leaders. Any medium that can access any spirit. Any smart person who can figure this out. I don't care if you use your psyche. I don't care if you can access demons and tell me what I have seen. But I'm not going to tell you the dream. Because if I tell you, maybe you'll give me a wrong interpretation. Because this is very important to me. The king did not forget the dream. He wanted to make sure that nobody would lie to him. Remember, these are heathens. These people don't know God. They have no knowledge of God. But Yahweh showed up in the land of Babylonia and revealed his eternal plan, including Christ, including his kingdom, and nations that are about to come, powers that are about to come. He revealed that to him. So he's sitting. So he summoned all these people. Whatever power you use, I don't care. Tell me what I dreamed and tell me what it means. Every one of them, they came. If all the training you got is from Babylonia, whether it is physics, chemistry, or theology, God tells you you're not going to make it. The only person who can save us is the person, Jesus Christ. Amen. Not the information about him. I have nothing against with theology. I, I myself spent seven plus years at the university level to study the Bible. I love the word of God. But you can never replace God with his word. The word is a means towards the end. You go through the words to meet the author. If you just kiss the book and stop there, the devil is going to deceive you. Let me tell you something. You guys, I don't want to be sidetracked, but when Jesus Christ was tempted in the wilderness, where did Satan came to test him, to tempt him? In Jerusalem, the holy city. Where did he come to talk to him? In the temple, the most holy place. What did he use to talk to him? The holy scripture. That's why I was telling them on Friday, don't talk to the snake. <laughs> there is no truth in him. The snake is running the world. He's lying to you. But even the enemy is going to use the Holy Scripture to deceive you. He will appear to you as light to lead you to darkness. He will appear to you as a minister of righteousness to lead you to sin. How are you going to discern that? You are so unarmed with your information. These people, I just read for you, so smart, handsome, quick learners. They're going to study language. They're going to study history. They are already bright. So look what's happening. But now, everything that they have learned is going to be tested. When, you're info when the information in your head fails you, God will not fail you. So what happened? Daniel and the rest of them, they gathered there. And the king asked them, tell me the dream and the interpretation. This is what he said. All of them said, no man on earth can tell you this, O king. No man. You tell us the dream, we'll interpret it for you. And the king said, I know you're trying to buy time. So he sent Ariok, the Bible says chief of the butchers, the king's butchers. In the modern day language, his heat squad. They were sent to execute every single one of them. They were fattened. Now it's time for slaughter. The best, the brightest, the royal, the noblest. 
and he was coming to kill them. When he came, the Bible said, thank God for Yahweh who can show up in your midnight hours. You can count on him. You can depend on him. Then Daniel, he looked at him. God gave Daniel wisdom and favor. And Daniel looked at him and said, just give us time. Everybody say, give us time. <laughs> when what you see in your marriage stress you out, when what you see in your kids stress you out, when what you hear about our land stress you out, when what you see going on in the West stress you out, just do some. Give me time. Not to go and cry, not to go and worry, just to go and seek the face of God. Give me time. He said, give me time. And he went and called for his three friends and all night prayer. Praise God. They were praying and the Bible says, the king of heaven intervened in the middle of the night and gave him the revelation of the king's dream and the interpretation. And God was so amazing. And Daniel looked up and he said, wisdom is yours. Power is yours. You change seasons, oh God. You give wisdom to the wise. You come from our rescue. He was exploding with praise to Yahweh. And the next day, he went to Ariak and said, take me to the king. I want to tell you something. Take me to the king. I will tell him his dreams and his interpretation. As soon as King Nebuchadnezzar saw him and he asked one simple question. He said, can you tell me my dream? He said, I can't. No one can. Every one of you lift the right hand and say, but there is a God in heaven. <laughs> I want all of you to shout, say, but God. But God. Shout it like you mean it, say, but God. But the king, in heaven, the king in heaven, when everything is silenced, when everything comes to an end, but God in heaven, he came to rescue this teenage. What did he do? He gave them revelation. And this is what he said to him. Oh king, this is what you saw. Very important. Because I want to share with you about the king and the kingdom shortly, then we pray. He said, this is what he saw. You saw this dazzling statue. And he described the statue. The head was gold. Then the chest was bronze. Then you see the tie was uh, silver. And it was uh, iron. Then it was clay. The toes were iron and clay. And he told them, these are the successive empires that are coming. Uh, you are the gold. See, as it goes down, it diminishes. It goes from the gold to the silver to the bronze to the iron and to the clay. We live in a day and time, the Bible says, just like iron and clay cannot mix, it will be a time of division. But we have the gospel. There is no law any legislative body that can come up with that can change human heart. There is no policy that can change your heart and my heart. But the gospel can change our heart. Amen. But God, the king, can heal us. So what happened? He said to him, you are looking at this. You are the gold. After you, after the Babylonian empire, then will come the Persians. Then after the Persians, the Greece empire will come. After the Greece empire, the Roman empire will come. Then there will be other powers coming. I want you, every one of you, think about this. God talk about the future. Like if it was you, you're talking about as if you're talking about the past. Because God dwells in timelessness. There is no time with him. He's in time. He's outside of time. He's the creator of time, but he's not confined with time. So he said, this is what's going to happen. You're going to face this warfare. You're going to face this challenge. They're coming. We, 
the pastors, we need to prepare our people for persecution, even in this land. Because the kingdom of God is not here just to deliver us from persecution. So what did Daniel say? But while you were looking at this statue, a rock not cut by human hands, Yahweh chiseled the Messiah from heaven and the rock came. The king was the kingdom rolling and came and hit the statue at his feet. And the Bible said, and God destroyed it and displaced it. And God sent a wind. And the wind came and blew it away. Like a chaff. A statue. Destroyed. Displaced. And became like a chaff. You know what a chaff is? A chaff is something that is attached. With wheat. Which is useful. But when you remove the wheat out of it, the chaff becomes useless. Every lie of the devil that the enemy has been lying to you, listen to me, young people. Every lie the enemy has been lying to you, the fire of God is here to consume it. God will give you your identity. The kingdom of God is here, Jesus said. Repent. So why do I want to share about the kingdom? Jesus in his preaching. He declared the kingdom of God. Jesus in his teaching. He explained the nature of the kingdom. Jesus casting out demons and healing the sick. He demonstrated the presence of the power of the kingdom of God. He said if I cast out demons by the finger of God. The kingdom of God has come. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. Shout and say kingdom. kingdom. When you're confused, call on the king. I want to say something to all of you that are here. God is telling you, come to me. My plea with every one of you in the few minutes I have left is please fall in love with the king again. Come back to the feet of the king and say, God, my sweat, my tears, my sleepless nights, they brought me nothing. You are my hiding place. You are my deliverer. You are my hope. You make my house a home. You bring meaning to my marriage so that it won't be useless in light of eternity. Please, don't come to his house and ignore him. Don't make this place about songs and sermons. It's all about him. When you give the king his place, when Daniel resolved his mind not to defile himself, it's because the prophetic anointing was on his life. And he, he was a prophet, so he saw what was coming. It was not a kosher, you know, Jewish law or something. He was not following certain kind of diet. No, he perceived something and made a room for God. Because when you go down to chapter 10, you see that he was eating the palace food. Let me say something to you. Even though this God of the scripture has no more a city or a temple, or a palace, or a priest, or any kind of ceremony, Daniel was reading the book. Why? Because the prophetic spirit was over him. Not because it was fashionable. You don't follow something that has no temple, no, no walls, no city, no priest, no prophet. But God made this young man prophets themselves. They perceived what was coming. God revealed to them till the end. What they have seen, there are certain things that
we have not seen even ourselves. So my challenge to every one of you, God has begun something in this place. Keep ushering the presence of God. You can't pay God. You can't buy anything from God. You can't sell anything that is of God. God is looking for a broken vessel. Because our brokenness is heavenly openness. God can find room to teach you how to be a prayerful mother. God can come and teach you to be a godly man, a godly husband, a prayerful grandpa, a prayerful grandmother. Don't be distracted by the devil. Just hold unto his feet and say, King Jesus, I honor you. Every one of you in reverence, please stand where you are.